Welcome to another video. It's your favorite math professor here, Dr. Tarsia Hubert. In this video, we're going to talk about types of observational study. So let's just recall what an observational study is. An observational study is those studies where researchers just observe um, explanatory variables and response variables. There's no manipulation of the variables whatsoever. They're just observing, all right? And so in this video, we're going to talk about three different types of observational studies. And starting with the first type, is your cross-sectional studies. Cross-sectional studies are observational studies that collect information about individuals at one specific point in time or over a very short period of time. So these are usually really quick, um, don't take long, and easy to do. Advantages of these are they're cheap, they are cheap and fast, and disadvantages is they may not get the full picture because the thing that you're studying may not happen at that point in time, but it could eventually happen later for instance when we talked about in the previous video we talked about um, measuring the effects of smoking to lung cancer if we was just to take a survey of people who smoke and don't smoke and see whether they got have lung cancer or not when we take that survey at that time they may not have lung cancer then but they may develop lung cancer at a later date and so in that case because we're doing it at a specific point in time or a very short period of time the disadvantage here is that we may not get the full picture because anything can happen later that we might be interested in knowing about the second type of observational study is the case control study these are retrospective retrospective means that we have to study things that happen back in time so this requires the individuals to look back in time or it requires the researcher to look back at old records or old documents, all right? In these case control studies, individuals, in these case control studies, individuals who have certain characteristics are matched with those who do not. So we match the participants to try to make a group that is homogeneous. Um, and then some advantages of these is these are also cheap and fast because they don't take long and they don't require much money. Um, the only thing about these the disadvantages is that you're asking people to go back in time and you know how that is. We could be forgetful um, or we also you're also requiring individuals to be honest, to tell the truth. And you also know how they go. People can tend to be dishonest. They might give you the answer that they think you want or the answer that sounds good so that they will try not to embarrass themselves. So those are some big disadvantages to the case control studies that you're asking people to remember things from the past and which sometimes we can be forgetful. I know I am. I can't even remember what I wore two days ago. Um, and then also asking people to be truthful is a challenge as well. And then a third type of observational study is a cohort study. This is where you put individuals into groups, which are called cohorts, and then you study them over a longer period of time. Over this period of time, characteristics about the individuals are recorded. Now, because this data is collected over time, these are considered prospective. So retrospective was going back in time, and prospective is going or looking ahead. So we're studying the individuals over time. Now, some advantages to the cohort study is this: this is the most powerful. Um, this is the most powerful of the observational studies, right? This is the best one to use. The disadvantage is that it takes a long period of time, and you tend to lose individuals, which could contaminate your results or make the results not as accurate. Um, so, because it is over a long period of time, people tend to drop out. But this is the best observational study to use: is the cohort study. Here's an example of a research study. The question is, is a television in a bedroom associated with obesity? That's the question. So what researchers did was they questioned 379 12-year-old adolescents, and they concluded from this study that the body mass index, the BMI, of the adolescents who had a TV in their room was significantly higher, significantly higher than the BMI of those who did not have a TV in their room. All right, so what type of observational study is it? So first of all, it is an observational study because all they're doing is observing. They're just seeing if these 379 12-year-olds, if they have a TV in their room or they, or they don't, and what is their BMI. So they're not changing nothing, not manipulating nothing. This is an observational study. So now the question is, which of the three types of observational study is it? 
This is a cross-sectional, which was that first type. So it's not retrospective. It's not making them go back in time. So it's not the case study. And then it's not prospective. It's not studying them over an extended period of time. So it's not a cohort study. So that means it's cross-sectional. You're interviewing students or you're interviewing these individuals at one specific time. Or you're figuring out information them, information from them at one specific time. So this is cross-sectional. What is the response variable here and what is the explanatory variable? So the response variable, remember, is what we want to know the outcome of. And the outcome is the BMI, the body mass index measurement. The explanatory variable is that variable that we think is explaining the BMI, which would be whether they have a TV in the room or not. Can you think of any possible lurking variables here? Remember, lurking variables are those variables that may also explain a high BMI but was not measured in the study. All right, some other things that could possibly be explaining the um, high BMI could be the amount of exercise that the individuals do a week. What are their eating habits like? What are they eating? Um, how much time are they watching TV? Whether they have a TV in the room or not may not be enough information to determine whether um, it's determining the BMI, but maybe how about studying how much time do they watch that TV? Um, also family history, and you could probably think of some other variables, but all of these are possible lurking variables. These are other variables that could possibly explain the high BMI measurements among the 12 year olds with the TVs in their room. Can we conclude that having a TV in the room causes higher BMI and explain? What do you think? We cannot make causation claims with observational studies. So we cannot conclude that having a TV in a room causes a higher BMI. We can only claim association, meaning we can only say that having a TV in a room is associated with the higher BMI for adolescents. All right, and so those were the three different types of observational studies that we talked about. And I just want to talk about two other types of studies really quickly. And one is a census. A census is a list of all individuals in the population along with certain characteristics of each individual. So now think about the census that the U.S. government takes every 10 years. Um, this is where they go around and they collect information about the different households. They're collecting information about everybody in the U.S., every U.S. citizen, and certain information about them, such as their political party, how much money they make, their race. So they're collecting all these different characteristics. That's an example of a census. So this is another type of study that can be done. Another type of study is called web scraping or data mining. This is the process of extracting data from the internet, which I think is very, very interesting. And I'm going to post a video to this in the comment sec or in the description below. So if you're interested, watch the video on web scraping. I think you'll find it interesting too. It's a short video. It's a short three minute video that shows you what web scraping is. So take the time out to watch that. All right. And that is the end of this video. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments or send me a personal email. Um, I will respond as soon as I get a chance to. And thank you all for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video.